Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question on sound, using the wave equation to calculate the wavelength of a sound wave in air, and seeing how this is affected when the source of sound is placed in a different gas. Here's a question from the 2007 Intermediate 2 paper. Two types of waveform are shown. Then we see waveform P, where the arrow representing the direction of the wave is drawn at 90 degrees to the arrow representing particle vibration, and waveform Q, where the direction of the wave is parallel to the direction of particle vibration. Part 1 of the question then asks us which waveform represents a longitudinal wave, and of course our answer is wave Q. Part 2 asks which waveform represents a sound wave. Now, you might be tempted to write P at this point, because you think that one answer will be P and the other will be Q, but the sound wave is actually wave Q again. If you're not too sure about the differences between transverse and longitudinal waves, then take a look at this video, which includes some nifty animations explaining this. Now for part B of the question. A signal generator is connected to a loudspeaker, which produces a sound wave of frequency 2 kHz. Part 1 then asks us to calculate the wavelength of the sound wave in air. To do this, we use this equation, known as the wave equation. V is the speed of sound, which we'll have to find in the data sheet at the front of the exam, F is the frequency of 2 kHz, and the last symbol, which looks like an upside down Y, is lambda, which represents wavelength in metres. To make wavelength lambda the subject of the equation, divide both sides by frequency F. Next, substitute our values. The speed of sound in air, which you'll find in the data sheet, is 340 metres per second, and we'll need to remember to convert frequency from kHz to Hertz. That gives us 340 divided by 2 times 10 to the power of 3, which is 0 0.17 metres. B part 2 says, the loudspeaker is placed a distance of 10.2 metres from a wall. Calculate the time taken for the sound to return to the loudspeaker. We're told a distance, and are asked to calculate a time here. So we'll be using this equation. Distance d equals speed v multiplied by time t. To make t the subject of the equation, divide both sides by v. Now the important thing here is that we're being asked to calculate the time for the sound to return to the loudspeaker. That means it's going to travel 10.2 metres from the loudspeaker to the wall, then another 10.2 metres back again. So the total distance is 20.4 metres. Time then is 20.4 divided by 340, which is 0 0.06 seconds. This time could also be written as 6 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds, but I'll not do that here. Finally, here's part C of the question. The loudspeaker is now placed in a tank of carbon dioxide gas. The frequency remains at 2 kHz. What effect does this have on the wavelength of the sound? Explain your answer. Well, if you take a look at the data sheet at the front of any National 5 exam, then you'll see that the speed of sound is listed for a whole range of materials, solids, liquids and gases. We've seen that the speed of sound in air is 340 metres per second but it's different in carbon dioxide, and this will affect the wavelength. Here's the wave equation we saw earlier, but rearranged to make wavelength lambda the subject. We've been told that the frequency of the sound hasn't been changed, and looking at the data sheet, you'll see that the speed of sound in carbon dioxide is lower than it is in air, at 270 metres per second. Since frequency is constant, a lower speed will result in the wavelength reducing. So, wavelength decreases, since the speed of sound in carbon dioxide is lower. You'll often see questions like this in exams, where you can use an equation to work out the answer, even though it's not a numerical question. Now, that's the end of our video. Hopefully you've found it useful, and if you've not done so, you'll think about subscribing to the channel for updates when other videos are released. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets, and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.